In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a monochrome design working with the Color Factory from AdvancedTShirts.com and getting into some particle and image effects, as you can see with this biker right here. And we've got some motion blur going on. Then we've got some particle dispersion effects going on here. And it's really easy to do in Corel. So you'll be able to learn about creating the particle dispersions in Corel. And it's easy to do, as I said. And then adding some motion blur into that to get some real nice effects in your designs. And do things that, as I've said, you just can't do with vector. But when you look at that design, that's just amazing. That's going to catch people's eye significantly when compared to vector. And one of the things I like about working with the color factory and images is I can do so many things that I just really can't do with vector. For example, this has some glitch built into it. And if you want to build some glitch into it, you can. I've got some glitch with the top green layer going on there which is a monochrome, and that's actually up on top of the text for some effects in the text, and I could do even more with that. So to get started here, I'm going to explain what we're going to do. I've got this image here, and I picked this up on Pixabay. It's a free image. I can work with it for free, as you can see right here, and there's the image, and I can download that. All I need to do is create an account, and these are public domain. You can use them commercially, what have you. I'll minimize that, and I'll take a look at this. Now, looking at this image, the first thing I'll do is create my dispersion effect. But I don't want to take a lot of time doing it. I want to make that easy. So what I'll do is I'll make some vector objects and then I'll go with fit to path along the biker. You'll see how I do that very easily. And then I'll get my dispersion effect and I'll also get my blurs from that dispersion. And I can tweak these and dial these in, you know, any way I want to as far as the blur is concerned once I've got that set up. Then I can take all of that combine it into one image. Then I can take all of that and convert that to a monochrome with the color factor actually doing the duotone with color for the effect. And you can see the effect that I get. Now I can go into all kinds of different colors and setups with this and get some really different looks based on the color of the shirt. And once again, we're working off the color of the shirt here. So I'm going with a black background. So I want to make sure that that black background is pure black, zero, zero, zero as you can see right there. If it wasn't, I want to make some adjustments and that's covered in some of the other tutorials. So to get started, I'm going to take this image, I'll just bring this over here and duplicate it to the left. And I'm going to create a rectangle, just a basic shape of a rectangle. And I'll keep that pretty small. I'll zoom in, pushing in on my center mouse wheel. I'll rotate that, I'll hold down control and rotate that. I'm going to give that more of like a longer diamond shape to it and then I'll create a few more of these and just kind of set them up kind of abstractly in different ways as you can see right there something like that I'm going to take this and reshape it a little bit bring some of this in a little bit more so this will be my foundation here. So I'll take these and I'm just going to, with all those selected, come up here to the multiple objects properties bar and weld those. That's going to be my shape. I'm going to give those a red outline. Now I'm going to zoom out of my biker and come over here and get my freehand tool over here where you see the Bezier tool in the toolbar and we'll select that. And then I'm just going to left click, hold down, and kind of follow the inside contour on the right hand outside of the biker to create a vector line that I can use for fit objects to path to create my dispersion effect. We'll come right down through here. Then I'll just right click and change that to a red. I can go to my shaping tool and if there's any place I want to make an adjustment like right here I can bring this in a little bit and just tweak that line just like I'd like it to be and I'm kind of happy where it is now. Now with that set up I'm going to come over and select the diamond shapes that I made. I may make those a little bit smaller and then I'm going to go to the fit objects to path docker and this is CorelDRAW 2018. And here's that docker. Now with this selected, the diamond shapes that I made, I'm going to hold down shift and select the vector 
line that I made along the biker. And I'm going to change my duplicates to, let's say, 20 for the first time. I'm going to go with progressive, and I'm not really going to change any of the other settings. And you can experiment with this and do many different things with it. And then I'll click on Apply. And now you can see that effect, how it's gone through there and created something that I can use to pull that out and create a particle effect. So I'm going to go with that for now and I'm going to zoom in and, I'm, and these objects are grouped by the way so I can just select the freehand object that I made and delete that. Now what I'll do here is go in and take a look at things and make sure I'm happy with where they're set up. So I'll ungroup for now, click off and I'm going to bring this Maybe in a little bit more there. I might do the same thing here. I might duplicate this up here and just tweak in how I'm going to get my particles or my particle effect working here. And I might rotate this into the shoe or boot of the biker a little bit more. The rest of this I'm all pretty happy with. So I'm going to go ahead and lasso all of those objects and I'm going to come up here to the multiple objects property bar and weld them then I'm going to hold down shift and select the bitmap and come up here to intersect and you'll see what happened here just in a second I'll left click on the vector and move that and I'll come here and click again now I've got all of that that I intersected as objects that I can use for like a particle effect coming out of the biker and the bike as you can see there now at this point what I want to do is create some blur effects so I'm going to go with this one that I just duplicated I'll go to bitmaps convert to bitmap 300 dpi transparent background then I'm going to go to bitmap blur and then I'm going to go to motion blur and have that set at straight and you can see that is going out 107 pixels. I'll bring that out some more. And that might be too much, but I'll select OK for now. And I'll bring this over and down right into the helmet of the biker, and you can see how that's playing off the particle effect. And then I could actually duplicate that. Left click, right click one time, duplicate, and move that a little bit. And you can see that effect that I'm getting. Then I'm going to go with my particle effect which is over here. Do I have the particle effect? Let me take a look here. There's an X in the center that I want to get a hold of, and that's right here where the circle is. I'm going to click again. What do I have there? I've got the blur. I believe my particle effect will be... I'll hit Control-Z two times and go back. Hold down Alt. And one, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three. So I want to get to that effect that's my particles effect. So I'm just going to go to view wireframe so I can see that. I can see that that's right here. So it looks like I just I could just go ahead and lasso just that. And I've got just that. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to go back to view enhance. Now if you're in 2019 you might not be able to see this but I have that select. select. I'm going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap but I'm going to go at 25 DPI, really low. Select OK. Now you can see that that effect is set up like that. But I'm going to take that 25, then I'm going to go to Bitmaps, Creative. I'm going to go to Scatter. Now you can really see the particle effect taking shape. And I'll select OK on that Scatter. And then I'm going to go from the X in the center. You can see the X right here. You want to select that because you're down a couple of objects move that over right into there. So now I've got this nice particle effect set up. I want to get rid of this vector here. If I can get a hold of it. There we go. We'll delete that. Won't need that anymore. And you can see that effect going on with that. And I might want to add some more blur in here. Duplicate that again. Move that. And I can move that up. Bring that in a little bit. Just like you can see right there. So now I've got all of this going on in this design. Next thing I'm going to do is create a black rectangle that's bigger than my design. Fill that with black. And I'll just right click on that and go order. I'll go to back of page. 
So there's my effect set up with the particle effect and the motion blur and everything ready for my biker. I'll select all of that, go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. This time I'll go with 300 dpi. Don't need a transparent background and select OK. And I'll zoom in, pushing into my center mouse wheel. And I'm going to go ahead and crop him and the bike. And I'll double click that. Now I'm going to go to my color factory with him selected. And I'm going to go with the duotone with color invert. So I'll click on that and that'll process. Now it'll take just a second, but it'll all be done automatically. And that'll pull the color and also invert the black. So all I see is the red. I've got two objects selected. I'm going to click off and I'll select my shirt here and then I'm going to grab my text and bring that over here. And now I'll select my duotone invert with color. And the color is always red, but I'm just going to left click, right click one time and duplicate that on top of the shirt. And you can see that that's just an amazing effect. An amazing look for a t-shirt. If you're doing some type of racing event or something like that, you can use this for motocross and automotive and all kinds of things. But you can see how amazing that effect is on a t-shirt. So different than working with vector. I'm going to take my red, which is my color. Color is always red, but you can change it to any color you want. I'm going to right click and change that to a yellow. And look at the effect. Or I could change that to a green, a bright green on that t-shirt. Then I could hold down Alt, change the white to say a yellow. And look at the effect on the t-shirt. just pops. And we'll resize this just a little bit. I'm going to take this yellow. If you want to create some glitch for this, glitch is really trending in graphic design today. Just select that, right click one time, move it a little bit, and then change that maybe to a little bit of a darker green. You can see that glitch effect in there. Or change that to say something like a cyan or a blue. Blue is a little too dark. Go back to a yellow for even more of the yellow or even more of the green. Or come down into one of the lighter greens. You get some really interesting looks. I'm just pulling back on my left mouse wheel while I'm hovering over the color palette, scrolling down, going down through the colors and just looking at different things. Right click on a purple and just look at that glitch effect. That's amazing. So you can see you can go through here and just do all kinds of things with color and working with your color, working with the monochromes, something like that darker look that's in there bringing in some more detail. If you want to go into three colors, but we'll just go with the green and yellow for now, which would just be two colors. So I'll just come up here, right click on the green. You can see that effect. Or actually, I'll go to yellow with that. Nice effect there. So once I've got that where I want it, I need to do is go ahead and grab my text. I'll left click, bring that over. Then I'll resize that to where I'd like it in my design. Zoom in here, bring this in. We got. Speedism 2019 with some particle dispersion and motion effects. I'm going to go and fill that with some green like the shirt color. And then maybe I'll offset that just a little bit and then fill that with a yellow. Once again, this is a two color design, very easy to print. Great look, pops right off the shirt. You know, if you had an event or something like that, you could have your logos and things down here. Going out with design, being able to set up. All of this very quickly and easy, working with the color factory and Corel Draw, stepping entirely outside the world of vector and getting into what's trending in modern graphic design, not having to print with a lot of colors. You can save ink with the D to Gs, print with less screens if you're screen printing, and create designs like this that really give you that edge over people that are working with vector and working with free images from pixabay.com and other websites. So just a quick look at some of the things we can do with that particle dispersion effect with the motion effect and the monochrome and everything all coming together to create a really nice look that has a lot of pop. We'll wrap here and we'll see you in our next video.